Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be looking at Peyton's pedal board. So this is Peyton, and he is the bass player in the Colin Little John Trio. Uh, it's from Northwest Arkansas, where I used to live. We played in a number of bands together, and uh, now are kind of a part of a writing collective. And uh, he was in town. We were doing some writing and uh, working on some trio tunes. And uh, we thought we'd go through and take a look at uh, what a bass player's pedal board uh, looks like and uh, look at some of the pedals that you use and why you use them. Yeah, uh, I know it's odd, you know, going through a bass player's pedal board because most bass players don't have a pedal board. Yeah. Uh, but I've found quite a few pedals just really necessary in just forming whatever tone of bass you want to come across in the mix and just how your bass sits in the mix. And so uh, a few of these pedals, I, I would really recommend that uh, bassists have as if you're gonna have any pedals. Um, but then there's some other ones that are just kind of more uh, dependent on the circumstance uh, and such. And so. All right, so let's talk about the signal chain real quick. So we're going uh, from the bass, we've got an active bass here, um, which is a big factor. You've got so much control there. Um, we're going into the pedal board and out from the pedal board straight into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. We're using the Ampeg SVT plugin. Uh, let's listen to a clean tone with everything off on the pedal board. So basically, the tone coming through here, um, nothing fancy is happening. Also, you know, my mistakes are just a little bit more evident, right? I mean, uh, there's there's less consistency in the actual um, sound of the bass coming through, and just as a bassist needing to be more consistent uh, for just kind of how the bass fits into the mix, uh, it's pretty important. And so, uh, going through kind of the signal chain overall, um, I could start on my actual active part of my bass, um, and that's, you know, kind of situational. Maybe I need just a little bit more bass or a little bit more mids um, when it comes to actually what's coming out of my bass, but I've got a few pedals here to solve for that consistency. Um, so kind of going through the signal chain real fast, going from my bass to the tuner. Uh, not going to talk about that one. It's pretty straightforward, yeah. but uh, this Studio Bass Compressor uh, by Seymour Duncan uh, is a big deal. And the reason why is because honestly, before being recorded as a bassist, I didn't really understand the need for compression, which sounds really uh, foolish, of course. But, you know, as soon as you hear yourself without compression playing your bass played back to you, you're like, oh my gosh, I need a compressor. I need this to be way more tight. It's less evident when you're playing like live. Definitely. Because yes. there's all the dynamics of the room. Mm -hmm. But when it's recorded back and there is the, all those dynamics aren't as intentional. Right. Uh, and again, uh, I'm not a perfect bass player. And so that's that's got to be there. And so uh, on here, I, I kind of skew lower. Um, so I like the correction to be on low. And I have about a 50-50 compression um, here with a little like moderate attack. And so here is my uh, compressed tone. So overall, that just felt way more rounded and, again, more, more consistent. That's really what I associate with the compressor yeah. and why I recommend it to bassists in particular. And it's more comfortable. Like, it's absolutely automatically, like, I'm on this channel, I've, I've talked a lot about compression pedals on guitar, and, and I actually have two compressor pedals on uh, stacked basically at all times because of that feel. It's so much more comfortable to play, and it's not that it's the compression effect, but there's just that enough roundness and bloom to the note that it's a little more forgiving, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, awesome, yeah. That's that yeah. already added a lot of warmth and roundness and exactly. And this would be like an always on. Absolutely, yeah. yeah this is this pedal is always on, um, and there's there's really not a zero situations where I'd turn it off. So yeah. um, definitely on the essential side, not on the toy side. Uh, nice. The next pedal to go through uh, is this MXR, um, the Ted Band EQ, and uh, 
MXR has other types of EQs when it comes to the bands that they actually accommodate, but as a bassist, those lower ends matter, matter a lot more, and so I don't, I don't like having uh, those, uh, those options kind of taken away from me, I guess, right. on, a, on a more abbreviated compressor. Mm -hmm. But this is also a pedal that is typically always on, um, actually is always on, and uh, the only kind of bothersome part is that it has very blue uh, bright lights and yeah. that comes with it. But I know this for a fact, uh, one time a light went off on one of these and uh, I actually called MXR and was like, hey, how do you get one of these LEDs? And they're like, oh, we'll just ship you a, a pack of 20. So if you're ever in the need to replace a light on an MXR pedal, they will be more than willing. <laughs> yeah, and this is a consistent thing, I think, with the 10 band EQs is most people have them and hate how bright the lights are and yeah. they go out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, but I, I mean, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I really yeah. do like this 10 band EQ. Um, so let's do before on the tone again. And now we got it on. So, um, as you can kind of see here, I like to keep a bump um, kind of in uh, the lows and the mids in order to just get a little bit more out of um, kind of what the bass takes up space for in the mix. And uh, I keep the, the later bands uh, pretty flat. But again, this is one that is always on, never off, definitely an essential. And you're using it very much like a preamp too, because you're yes. also increasing the signal that's hitting the front of the amp. So it's shaping the tone just by that extra amount of gain. Right. And then just the subtle EQ there is like that in the compressor. I mean, you've got a preamp. Yes, exactly. You know, it's nice and bundled and packaged. And then now we can put whatever we want on top of it, right. but it's the base layer is clean. Right. Um, and I would say definitely of, of the ones that are my, my staples, you know, these, these three are the staples on a board. So if you're a bassist and you're kind of trying to start somewhere, I would say, you know, definitely have a tuner, duh. Yep. but also just the compressor and EQ. And then from there you can stack anything on top of it. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of, uh, a couple of these pedals, um, I kind of rotate the order on because depending on what order they are in the signal chain, they'll kind of get different results. Yep. And so uh, more recently, I have my uh, Electro Harmonix uh, bass microsynth that I have purely for fun. Like it's yeah. it's not necessarily like I use it a ton in a bunch of contexts, but I love messing around with it. Um, whenever I'm just trying to be gaudy and in people's faces, I use it. Yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, you have a couple of options here. So trigger is basically, you know, how strong um, of a signal you need in order to activate um, the, uh, the, synth, the synth engine. Um, and then the rest of these, you know, you have middle of the road or up, up on the road when it comes to uh, sub octave guitar and octave and then a square wave. And so I like to have some clean um, here on the guitar and with a little bit of octave, sub octave and a little bit of octave. And then the square wave I typically have on par with actually the clean tone coming in. And then over here, um, everything here is the filter sweep that has to do with actually the like the synth part of it, so more of the square yeah. wave. And so the attack delay, you know, is, you know, uh, I hit the note and, you know, how fast it's coming back to me. Yep. Um, and then the resonance and these start and stops um, are really fun to play with. Um, so I think I'm going to kind of demo that real quick. So it's it's just really crumpled up. It's yeah. like you know it's it's definitely an odd like almost distortiony, um, yep. but a lot more compact. Yeah. And so um, as I kind of play around with that, let me actually bring the guitar down and bring the uh, square wave up and keep the octave. 
and so now that we have that activated, um, let's play with these filters. So um, when these stop and start frequencies, it's really fun because, you know, let's say I get the most extreme start and stop. So it gets a lot more gritty. Um, let me turn the rate up. Just very electric, <laughs> very yeah. uh, crunchy. So, yep. so again, I don't use that extremely often. It's more of in specific song situations, um, but I, boy, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy, it's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. So the next one is the bass octave. <laughs> right. So the bass octave, um, you know, that's going to throw you an octave below what you're playing. And so uh, an important one here, I think, is because you're playing a bass, you need to be cognizant of you're going down an octave. So you can't really use this pedal, in my opinion, um, anything like below um, like a higher E, because yeah. like, think about it, the what the pedal will throw you is the open E string. So I mean, right. you know, I could do that with B because I, you know, I play a five string and I have that B string, but at the same time, you know, those, uh, you can't go too low. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's like a wall there. It's kind of a limit. Definitely. Um, and you see, you see a bass octave pedal on a lot of bass players' pedal boards. If they have pedals on there, octave, octave is a classic bass, you know, effect and, uh, MXR is definitely, uh, this one has a, a couple more features than like your standard, um, boss. Um, right. OC. Um, and so, yeah, what, what are the ways that you use this one like in, in what context? And Yeah. Uh, one thing that I kind of forgot about here on, you know, things that are always on. Um, so I really like the mid boost here uh, on the octave pedal. And that's just on whether or not the pedal is activated. And so I, I just like that little bit of mid boost. It's not anything too crazy. And so... Yeah. Um, cause there's already enough happening elsewhere, but like, it's, it's not enough to be crazy. Uh, so there's a, uh, song that I use this on. It's specifically the end part of who did you think I was by John Mayer. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the part goes like this without anything on top of it. So... Now that we actually add the octave, we're getting something beneath what I'm playing. And see, that's where it's really interesting, because I was playing with this earlier, and uh, you could tell that that low A was getting out of range, right? Yeah. Like, so the open A string was dropping too far down. Mm -hmm. And so actually this is a good example. So this has some interesting knobs of growl and girth, which are both very aggressive. Um, but the growl is obviously what's probably causing this. Yeah. Um, and maybe a little bit down on the girth, but, um, ultimately, um, having just a tinge of that in there is pretty helpful and yeah. makes you take up a little bit more space when you're high up, because as a bassist, it's almost a little dangerous to go too high up and stay high up because you're not covering the low end that you as a bassist need to provide. Right. So now that I've, uh, you know, adjusted the effects for this bass octave, it's, it's, I've turned down the growl, I've turned down the girth. So let's listen to it. So definitely a lot more uh, rounded out on that low end because there wasn't too much growl and too much girth. Right. So finding that balance is really helpful. But whenever you're up on the neck, definitely helpful to cover your basses down low um, so that the song doesn't feel like the air kind of got sucked out. Right. Of it. That would be not great. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, it's that's a great sound in uh, octave pedal. And it, and it gives you some dirt levels and some amounts of... Things besides just the pure octave, um, right? So it's it has some character, right? Just cool. Uh, speaking of character, the sans amp. <laughs> yes, um, the sans amp. I I've actually had a sans amp on. Well, before I even had a board, I think I, I just had a sans amp uh, pedal, and it's just been my real fun overdrive pedal. That just I, I think the quality is just 
that it's the best it could be kind yeah. of on that overdrive for a bass. So with, with this uh, pedal, I used to have a version of it that uh, was without the presets and I was able to get the one with the presets. And so um, the, the person I actually got it from, we traded pedals and he was like, I like to do a bunch of changes live and all of this. And I thought that was insane. And, but we just traded, we just traded pedals because awesome. that was, my preference was for preferences. Right. And then his was for uh, just chaos. So yeah, good for him. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in general, uh, the drive, So it's definitely more of uh, that one's more of a bassy drive, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's definitely swamping it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, which, depending on the situation, yeah, you know, it's it's what it needs to be. Um, I've also used this in general for uh, just as a booster in the past of just trying to boost my signal a little bit, um, kind of in uh, guitar solo situations, right? Where uh, you know the soloist is doing their thing, and so they're leaving space in the mix. I step in with a little bit more uh, grit, just taking up a little bit more space, and so that the solo just doesn't feel like, again, the air has been sucked out of the room. Right, exactly. Right. And then the first preset is even more. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like fuzz. I mean, it's... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, bassist version of fuzz. Um, I've had that one for a long time. Um, I'm just, I just like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, these other two are newer to the board, and so first here, um, this is not a fancy pedal by any means. Um, this was $30 on Amazon. <laughs> no yeah. joke. It's uh, just this cheaper cheapo booster pedal. Um, doesn't mess with my signal chain, and so it passes. You know, I mean, it's... Right. Uh, I've got low, um, level, and high, and so if in the situation where, you know, I just wanted a little bit more low end and it to be a little bit louder, uh, maybe it's that situation I just described with the solo, taking up a little bit more space. And so that's, that's adding just, I guess, again, a little bit more oomph. Um, you know, it can feel a little bit distorted as well. Right, hitting the front end of the amp yes. harder. Right. Yeah. Uh, lastly here, and this is the one I'm least familiar with, but the one Colin actually recommended to me, is the Organizer by Earthquaker. And it's it's fun because it's uh, you're, you're converting your bass into a more organ sounding instrument. So it, it wobbles around a lot. This is definitely a, a fun one. Like this is one that I just have been playing around with lately. Just to add a little bit more texture. I also like to do more chordy um, kind of things on the bass, and so this kind of helps out there. Gives a little bit more warmth um, and a little bit more togetherness, and again makes it sound less like a bass and more just like an organ. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean. Playing chords up high and then adding these ethereal things, like some some modulation on the board. I mean, it just is like right. gives you movement, um, some air and space. It really most of your board is pretty practical. Um, yeah, you know, like even the the bass micro synth, like that is a version of a drivey sound. It was super usable and wasn't right. You know, like, right. It wasn't going to be absurd. You know, showing up. Um, on a session and then <laughs> throwing that thing on, it's not gonna, you're not gonna get fired immediately. That's right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. you, you gotta use it well and then you don't get fired. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, dude, that's awesome. Thanks for uh, walking us through the, the pedal board here. Hopefully there is some, you know, tips and tricks uh, if you have some pedals like these or if you're looking at uh, building a bass pedal board, um, I think that there is some really universally usable pedals here um, right and you know some things to also kind of spark some inspiration 
um, creatively. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed today's video and this new content. Uh, thanks to Peyton for jumping on today's video. Um, if this is the kind of content that you do enjoy, I uh, ask that you please like and subscribe. Uh, let us know down in the comments what bass pedals did we miss? What are things that um, you have on your bass pedal board? Uh, what is another element um, that's kind of maybe missing in your eyes, you know, like on, on how you would build out um, a bass pedal board down in the comments below. Uh, until next time, I've been Colin. Peyton. See ya. Hello, I just lost. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> no, you on the on. internet? Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> Good. I just forgot. I... Do you want to introduce? Yeah, I'm going to introduce okay. you. I'm just trying to think of how to do that. <laughs> I don't like I don't know what I'm doing yet you know like in general with YouTube well, so well yeah but I mean I, I think you could that's still fine yeah um, okay and in today's video we're gonna be looking at his pedal board what the fuck was that all right uh, Wow <laughs> what is the name of the song yeah what is the name of the song <laughs> I guess let's just start talking <laughs> just start um, is that fine yeah, it freezes on okay. the uh, when it's like trying to capture the thing. It looked like a demon. Um, yeah, I it's mean, fine. I can, no, no, it's fine. I want to check and make sure that we're not uh, wasting time here. <laughs> and it's just gonna like be a slightly different <laughs> yep shot now, but it's okay. I'm gonna start that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you want to change your preset, hold it down. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what is the deal? That's fine. I'm going to restart. Yeah. <laughs>